Hi, I have a question, um, and this goes back to the vote that was taken on um, in front of the, you know, the vote that was taken by all of the folks in the city of Burlington on question three in particular in zoning. Okay. And uh, I think Janice made the statement that this zoning change brings us less affordable housing than our current zoning. And I just want both uh, candidates to comment on that. I don't believe that's the case, and I just want to... All right, thank you very much. Um, so I Janice. Just, yeah, I'd love to comment on that. Um, I didn't actually say that, I think, right now, but the fact is um, this particular zone that was created um, recently does something that no other um, zone in the city does, and it gives increased height and increased mass without public benefits, public benefits with a large P and a large B, which are technical terms that usually refer to increased affordable housing, increased senior housing, um, garden space, public art. So what we're doing is we are moving from 65 feet by right to 160 plus feet by right without getting more affordable housing. So people have said, oh, that area isn't zoned for housing right now, therefore we're getting more by putting housing there. But that is a false, um, that's a false argument because we could certainly have created a zone that had housing there, but, but, but judged um, how much housing and what kind of housing by the kinds of standards that are elsewhere in the city. Um, what I did, what I do believe that I did say is that the so-called affordable housing that is being put in this um, building is not affordable. And um, these kinds of developments raise the rents all over the city. So, but the term affordable housing, the idea that we're getting more affordable housing is consistently used to justify developments that are bad for, our, um, for the people who live here, that are bad for the environment, that are bad for our quality of life. And it's a, uh, it's a scam and it's a dangerous scam. We need to build affordable housing that is truly affordable. Well, and on that, um, I would just ask, how do you encourage uh, private developers who have to make things balance, how would you encourage them to build more affordable housing? What would your policy be there? Sure. Um, the first thing I would say is that courting public devel private developers is not, our, our, is not necessarily our first um, method to get more affordable housing. There are other ways. We could um, give incentives to... Um, to um, private property owners to um, create accessory apartments in their houses. At, at currently, that's actually, the uh, Planning Commission creates obstacles for that, for, for private um, homeowners. We could have tiny houses. We could also put money into cooperatives. Um, this is uh, something that's happening in a lot of other innovative cities that we're not doing here in Burlington. Um, we could also insist that students are housed um, on campus. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Jane? Yes, so the question about um, does the new zoning bring more or less affordable housing? Mm -hmm. So under the old zoning, which I was involved in, we, won we wanted to encourage investment in downtown. And under that old zoning, we got very little investment in downtown, very little new investment in downtown. And a developer could build a 10-story building up to the maximum height with 100% commercial, no housing at all. Now, what we are getting under the new zoning is 74 perpetually affordable homes. As affordability as defined in the inclusionary zoning ordinance. Affordability, this term, always has to be defined in relationship to somebody's income. In inclusionary zoning, we do not serve very low income people people below 65% of median, 50% of median income. In order to serve those households, you need, you need public subsidies that help finance the construction and that subsidize the ongoing operation because the housing can't lose money or else you will lose that housing over time. And so my approach has been to very strongly support the Champlain Housing Trust. And we are very fortunate in the city of Burlington that about 25% of our housing stock is taken out of the speculative market. This is because of 30 years of progressive housing policy that I am very proud to be associated with. Because of this Sh Champlain Housing Trust, that is our bulwark against gentrification, and we need to keep building that bulwark. And if reelected, I will be working on ways to put more capital into the nonprofit sector. The market rate housing that the private sector will take care of that. We, we this, as the public sector, 
We need to focus on this permanently affordable housing using the land trust model. Okay.